Mary says no, Edith says yes, Carson opens up, and Edna gets the boot. We'll discuss this and more today on Up with Downton. I'm your host, Chase, and I'm here with... Holly. Tanya. And, and Tanya. Hi, Tanya. Hi. And, um... Let's talk about the episode, guys. What first impressions? I really liked it. I, I think this is my favorite season so far. I mean, we're three episodes in, but I really like this season. So I feel like we know the characters so well that we can just dive right into the story, and it's I, I'm having fun with it. I'm, I'm really enjoying the storylines. Yeah? What's your favorite? <laughs> Daisy. Daisy. Daisy and Alfred. <laughs> Oh, it, it's so sad for Daisy because she's, you know, you just want to be your buddy. You just really feel for her. And she's doing everything right until this episode. Right. I, I felt she was doing everything right. She's doing her job. She's you know, minding her manners and doing what she's supposed to do. And then, and then this episode, she sends, uh, who Alfred. Does she, Alfred. she sends Alfred, yes, to catch Jimmy and Ivy smooching. Jivey. Is there a <laughs> <Frangelina. Their> celebrity <laughs> name. <laughs> and she Im immediately regrets it. It backfires on her. So I think she's learned her lesson and she'll go back to minding her P's and Q's. But she still will get Alfred. I or will Davey. she? I don't know. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Um, speaking of Alfred, he notices an ad from the Ritz in London. It is a hotel, not a cracker. Um, <laughs> although I wonder, are they related? Like, did they serve the crackers at the fancy restaurants? Is that a thing? I don't know, but now I have to know. Let's, it, hey, internet, get on that. <laughs> Find out for us. I know. Oh my. Um, Wait, anyway, he, he wants to train at London's Ritz Hotel under a chef Escoffier. I actually looked this up. Auguste Escoffier was a real life French chef oh, wow. who popularized French cuisine in Great Britain. In this time period. Look at so, you using the internet. Yeah, thanks a lot, Wikipedia. <laughs> um, so, what else happened last night? Let's do best moments. Let's go around the table. I'll go. I'll go last. I'll go let Tanya go. No, go ahead. <laughs> oh, best moment. Oh, there's best as in good or best as in the most. I'm gonna leave that up to your discretion, Hall. <clears throat> well. The one that really caught my eye and made me stop and think was when uh, Rose was dancing with that fella. I don't remember his name. John. Jack Ross. No, he wasn't Jack yet. No, no, no he, John. John was his name, John. I think so. And he was drunk oh. and stumbling, and and the family just sat there, and I thought, okay, somebody's going to get up and help this poor lady dancing with the fool, and nobody did. And then the moment that Jack Ross came down from the, from the stage and started dancing with her and was treating her like a lady again, then they bounced up and, oh, no, no, we can't have this. God forbid she dances with a black man. And she was happy, and he was happy, and it was a wonderful moment. And, and then the family ruined it. I don't think we've seen the last of Jack Ross. And I'm sorry, not. that was that was the singer's name. And he's yes. played by Gary Carr. He's the show's first African-American cast member, and I'm very excited he's here for the season. He's very handsome. Yeah. Um, Let's, you know, and I, I want to say I think they did a really good job. They acknowledged the racial tension, the racism that was inherent in that period without condoning it. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. And I think that you really had to, they did, Julian Fellows and the other writers did a really good job. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope we get to see more of how that progresses um, this season. Tanya, what do you think? I thought that was a really good scene also because... Yeah, it's like they were fine with her being on the floor with a drunk guy and embarrassing her. But then as soon as he stepped down, like you said, it's like now they're all up in arms. And um, so I, I thought that was a really good scene. Um, and Rose is just like, I don't understand. Why are you being so rude? You're being mm -hmm. rude here um, by not, you know, by being rude to Jack. And you do see the generational changes in attitudes because Rosalind is obviously the most hostile towards yes. it. Mary and Tom really don't haven't at you know carry their way i don't think they're uh they're against it necessarily mm -hmm. and then rose she, she doesn't see the problem she doesn't see the problem no and i think that's you know absolutely kind of what happens through through time mm -hmm. right um so that was good i think my tanya what was your favorite moment um i'm not sure i really th i like the conversation between mary and uh lord gillingham just that whole storyline and how that's progressing and um when they're out on the field yeah when they're on the field but even before that in the drawing room or whatever they call it the um 
when he's like, you know, she's like, you've just met me two days ago officially. And he's like, but I love you. And it, you it's like he brain. seems really, yeah, and he seems really genuine. But then it's also, like she said, you've, you haven't known me that long. But I thought it was a really good scene at the end, um, you know, when she's telling him, you know, Matthew's still in my brain, you know, still yeah. in my head. And um, so I like that. That was probably a really good scene. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I think that was one of my favorites. But since you already talked about it, I'm going to talk about another one of my favorite <laughs> scenes. And that was when uh, Mrs. Hughes fires Edna Braithwaite. Yes. Oh, that was, that was good. awesome. She... She let her have it. And I just love seeing that side of Mrs. Hughes so powerful and forceful. Protective. Protective mm -hmm. of Tom. And the uh, family, really. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so let me ask you guys this. Uh, was there a 1920s equivalent of the book, He's Just Not at That Into You? <laughs> that we could that we could give to Edna because I don't think she's getting the message with Tom. No, she's oh. not getting the message. She's not. That's funny. No, I guess it would be called the manner of a discerning gentleman who shan't be making you his lady. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's a really long title. <laughs> wow. Titles were longer. Called Julian then. Fellows. Thanks, <laughs> thanks Twitter for making titles shorter. Oh you know. my. Um, what about uh, misty-eyed moments? Was there was there some a scene in the episode that that brought you to tears or almost to tears? I wasn't, I didn't get misty eyed, but just the interaction between Anna and Bates and, you know, he's really trying to figure out what's going on with her and she's pushing him away and just feeling the shame that she talks about later. And, um, it's kind of, it's just heart wrenching. I wasn't, I didn't tear up, but it's just heart wrenching to know we as the audience know the full story and her closest partner doesn't and so just that tension and just the sadness of that I think my um, misty eyed again I didn't cry but it was your favorite moment was the interaction between Gillingham and Anna I mean not sorry not Anna Mary um, that she wants him you know she wants him she wants him on a level that she that she's actually just trying to suppress that she's physically mm -hmm. attracted to him and he obviously wants her and the, she just she can't she can't bring herself to allow herself to be in a relationship with him. And I, that internal struggle is what really chokes me up. Mm -hmm. That the happiness is right there; it's within her reach. She just can't let go yet. But again, it's been six months, and I get that. That's really soon. And I was watching with mm -hmm. my husband, and he was like, "Well, that's soon nowadays. Wouldn't it be even? Wouldn't it be considered even sooner back then?" you're still in mourning. Mm -hmm. You should still be wearing black and all of that. Um, how would society look upon Mary getting engaged so soon after Matthew's death? I guess it would be okay. Julian Fellows does his homework. Um, we know it would work out, but I have to wonder. But Lord Gillingham, Gillingham did say, I'll wait a couple of years. It's true. So maybe which is, that's a long time. That is a long time. Mm. God bless him for wanting to wait that long. Yeah, and I think Mary knows that's a decision she'll regret. Yeah, to like she said in the last she, yeah, scene. Acknowledges. Mm -hmm. She could regret it for a long time to come. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, well, my, my misty eyed moment, I, I um, was one of the last scenes of the night. It was uh, Carson Hughes in her office, and she, she gave him that frame for, for his uh, lost love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alice, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I really enjoy seeing kind of this softer side of Carson. You know, he said, this is a, the quote from the episode. He said, the business of life is the acquisition of memories. In the end, that's all there is. That's and so true. You just, that's we true. haven't really seen him getting in touch with, you know, that emotional, vulnerable side. Right. So it's kind of fun. He suppresses it so they can get the job done. Yeah. Did anyone think that Alice looked a little bit like Mrs. Hughes? I mean, I guess all pictures back then, black and white. I guess Portrait I didn't style. really pay attention to the picture. I'll have to go back and look at that. You know, I'm the same way. I just, just I didn't assume that would be a through plot line for the season. I really didn't pay attention to what she looked like. Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm glad they are continuing to talk about, you know, his relationship with her. Right. And now his, you know, kind of almost inability to connect with other people. And maybe that's going to be breaking down. Well, I've been saying it all along that I want them to get together. So I, I wonder if that will happen. 
<clears throat> I hope so. <laughs> Cross my fingers. We'll see. We'll see. We shall Carson. see. Carson needs love too. Since we're speaking of Carson, can I say my favorite line? Please do, Tanya. When they're at breakfast and everybody is just not very morning friendly and um, Thomas is like, what's going on? And then Carson says, I always think there's something foreign about high spirits at breakfast. Amen, Carson. <laughs> Amen. I am not a morning person and at all. We should and go. I am suspicious of people that are in high spirits in the morning. Yeah. Those who don't know Tanya, that is so true. You do not whistle early in the morning. No you whistling, let Tanya please. wake up a little bit. We should let our viewers, our listeners know that we are recording this at just right before nine o'clock in the yes. morning so that quote is apropos it is it is um can i say my favorite line yeah oh i have several but this is one of my favorites edith is about as mysterious as a bucket oh that was a good one <laughs> that we we lol the whole living room last night or sunday night that was a good yeah good line. speaking of really edith cool. i'm gonna use that now yeah she um she and Gregson are still going. He's going to Munich soon, and he has her sign some document. Yes. That she didn't she even didn't. read. No. She didn't even skim. No. It was just like, It's like you know, we do with the internet yeah. contracts nowadays. A, I have a, read and agree to this. Con- you know, yeah. you click yes. Yeah. She signed. She didn't read. She just, I know that part I'm really <laughs> um, curious about what's going to happen with that because why would he just have her sign this? Mm-hmm. And So I'm really in, intrigued in that storyline. Yeah. So. And Edith stayed the night for the first yes. time. Yes, she did. Um, Aunt Rosalind's maid totally rats her out. Uh, Rosalind chides her uh, decision. As you would anybody, a young, a, a mature, wise aunt would say to their niece who just did something like that. Even today, you're, you're going to say, now remember, I'm not a spy, I'm not your mom, but you have to live with... The repercussions of this and your reputation is everything so just be careful well she was out of line with the uh comparison i think between uh gregson and antony you know the oh her, that was harsh yeah the former fiance who left on their poor edith. their wedding i know poor edith yeah. i'm really glad we're getting to see kind of a, a she's talked about character growth she went from being you know just evil villain Edith mm-hmm. from season one, ratting out mm-hmm. Mary, you know, kind of the Jan Brady <laughs> to, you know, her, she's a good person now. We want her to be happy. I think right. that's. But I don't think their family's opinion of her has changed. She's still kind of under the radar with the family. Mm-hmm. It's like she still doesn't exist, it seems like. She's just kind of off and the aunt is aware of her, but it just still seems like I was thinking of that uh, when I was watching it that she's she has the storyline but there's still no interaction with family and people like they don't take her seriously Mm -mm. no Hmm. well guys we are about out of time for this i know right oh one more thing just one more thing hit me okay uh when lord grantham starts going off about love and talking to mary and how if two intelligent people fall in love that they will sometimes have to negotiate on thin ice and then he says a few more lines and he says oh my goodness that was strong for an englishman that was strong <laughs> language for an englishman yes, yes. that was yes. pretty funny that was, that was funny. good that was good well guys our we like to end with kind of a fun uh game and you know uh miss hughes says she she gave carson the the picture frame for his desk so that you know the other servants will know he's human so I'm just wondering what is in his desk that's freaking people out that makes him think he's not human. So what is Carson hiding in his desk? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe a rubber chicken from the stage when he played on the oh, stage, you know, just something out of character. Yeah, whoopee yeah. cushion. Yeah, whoopee yeah. cushion. <laughs> Chattering teeth. Yeah, they're like, what? Where are these? Where did these come from? I have no idea. I think he has a, a drawer full of broken glass shards, so whenever he starts feeling emotions, he can just oh. put his hand down there oh. and go back to being Carson. Oh. I can't top that. I have nothing. Yeah. I say it's completely empty. Like his heart. Like his no. soul. No. no. No, you know I love him. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. We'll be back next week. I'm Chase. I'm Holly. I'm Tanya. And this has been Up With Downton.